then Jesus gives us the strength that we need to say yes to him and no to things that are wrong. And we find ourselves being happy, happier than without Jesus. Because when we're doing things without Jesus, they might be fun for just a little bit of time, but then we're like, oh, I need something else. But when we have Jesus, we're like, Jesus, this is what I've been looking for. And so how do we, how do we get Jesus? Well, one way is, what is this book again? Bible. The Bible. Now, the, in this Bible today, we heard about Jesus. One way that Jesus gives us himself is in a meal. Do you remember what this meal is called? What is it called? The Lord's Supper or Holy Communion or the Lord's Table or the Eucharist. Those are all different words for the same thing. Right on that table right there is our little servings of a little piece of bread and a little cup of wine. And in a little while here later in, during this worship, people are going to come down the center aisle and they're going to come to that table and, and take that bread and wine. Why would they do that? Because Jesus told us to do it. And he gives us himself. Now, we don't understand everything about how it works, but Jesus just told us to do that. Because why? Because we need Jesus, don't we? Yes. And one day you guys will get a chance to eat the Lord's Supper. Yeah. And, but Jesus gives you himself, and I pray that uh, you would keep coming to him for everything that you need. How about we fold our hands? And let's pray. We, I'll say some words and then you say them with me. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you, Jesus. For, being my savior, for being my Savior and giving me yourself, giving me yourself. to forgive me, forgive me and give me strength. Give me strength. Amen. Amen. Thanks to you guys for coming up here. You can go back to your seats. transgression and for my sin man of sorrows came to take my place king over creation slain for my salvation unspeakable love abounding in grace now I
Our children said amen. Study after study shows that a large percentage of Christians know little about the Bible. They may have faith that is a mile wide, but it's only an inch deep. It seems that many Christians today really spend very little time in the Bible. I, I have no way of knowing how much time you spend in the Bible. Uh, I know there are people maybe who this might be the only time they're in the Bible, that they open up the Bible or even hear the Bible when they're in worship. And I know there are people who maybe attend once a month, sometimes less than that. And imagine being limited to 15 minutes a week and then multiply all, you, all the other sources of information that balance there's no balance there. Uh, so I think we can understand that situation today. 
And faith without knowledge leads to doubts and questions and costly mistakes in life and in faith. And that's one of the reasons for this Route 66 series, uh, sermon series. One of my goals is to cover some of the biggest names and topics in the Bible. And the big topic today is the Lord's Supper, also called Holy Communion, or the Lord's Table, or the Eucharist. All different names for the same thing. As I mentioned earlier, the earliest recounting of uh, the night when Jesus instituted this uh, special meal comes from the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians that we heard a moment ago. Paul begins by saying, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed. Think about who was at the table that night. Judas, the disciple who would betray Jesus, was there. He was already plotting against Jesus. Judas would end up selling Jesus for 30 pieces of silver to the people who wanted Jesus dead. Judas would lead them straight to Jesus in the garden. Judas would, uh, with the exchange, uh, common exchange between friends of a kiss on the cheek, Judas would identify Jesus as the one to be captured and crucified. And yet there was Judas at the table with Jesus. Could that happen here? Could there ever be someone who comes to the Lord's table knowing in his or her heart that he or she is going to betray Jesus by sinful words and actions against Jesus or against someone else? Pretending to be friends with Jesus but already knowing in his or her heart what they're going to do. It wouldn't be the, last, the first time, and it certainly won't be the last time. Some of us have become good at compartmentalizing our lives. We have our faith in this compartment, and then our family relationships in this compartment, and our work relationship, our work life in this compartment and our relationships in the community in this compartment and sometimes these different compartments overlap sometimes they don't so the abusive father still might sit in the same pew each week his family life and his church life for a moment overlap Um, the dishonest salesman who cheats people, sings in the choir, say. So his work life and his church life overlap for a moment. Or the unfaithful spouse may lead Bible study or teach Sunday school. It happens. Remember, on the night he was betrayed, Judas, the betrayer, was at the table with Jesus.